Hi and welcome back to the fourth of our index laws videos, this one regarding the power to, to the zero law. Let's examine first these numbers. So we've got 2 to the power 1 which we know is 2. 2 squared or 2 by 2 is 4. 2 cubed will give us 8, 16, 32 etc. Looking down our list that way you'll notice that these numbers I've just written in will halve as we proceed down the list. So let's extend and see what happens to our pattern. So Judging by this pattern, 2 to the power 0 should actually equal 1, exactly half of 2. 2 to the power negative 1 will be a half, a quarter, an eighth, and so on. Now we'll look further on at these others later on, but I want to focus on this one, the 2 to the power 0 equals 1. It can be shown for in, that anything to the power 0 will actually give us an answer of 1. So let's consider this. If I've got a to the m over a to the m, we can see that it's effectively a by a by a, etc., until we've got m lots of a on the numerator, and then similarly down the bottom, a by a by a, etc., until we've got m lots of a on the denominator. Now we can actually cancel these out as we go. Now, as we. And in the end, you'll notice we've cancelled everything out, leaving effectively one in the numerator, one in the denominator, and an answer of one. Okay. You'll recall from the second law that a to the power m divided by a to the power m can be written as a to the power m minus m, or a to the power zero. Now, clearly, these two things are the same. So it follows, therefore, that a to the zero, or any base to the power zero, will give us an answer of one. And that's what our law states, that any term to the power of zero is equal to one. You might care to pause the video here and write down this general rule. Okay, moving on. Here's some examples of our power of zero law in action. So we know that anything to the base of zero will give us an answer of one. So three to the base of zero will give us one. Similarly, x to the power of zero, x being just a different base, will also give us the power one. Now let's examine here, 5 times x to the power of 0. Well, I know x to the power of 0 is 1, I just found that out. So I'm actually saying 5 lots of 1, and 5 lots of 1 is 5. In this case, we've got an example of the third law. We know that we can multiply the 7 and the 0. When we've got one power raised to another power, we just multiply the 2. So we've got a to the power of 0, and as we know, that's going to equal 1 as well. This is a bit more complex, our final problem. So let's consider it in two parts. Initially we've got negative 3, and we're timesing that by x to the power 0. Now x to the power 0 is 1, so I'll just replace x to the power 0 with the 1. Plus we've got 5 lots of this rather convoluted expression. But as we know from previously, anything raised to the power of 0 is going to be equal to 1, so I've just got 5 lots of 1. So effectively I've got negative 3 plus 5, which simplifies to 2. Okay, I hope this has helped. Thanks for listening.